happen this now? I don't know. It, it won't be for, until after the trial starts? Probably, yeah. Yeah. See, my only problem with Judge Nickerson is that... I'm going to ask a sort of long-winded question. Okay, and I'll try to respond. Just to yeah. get a, a setup shot for yeah. John and so on. But there's, there have been a series of prosecutions, Southern and Eastern District in New York, Gambino, Persico, uh, Salerno, culminating now in a uh, trial called the Commission Trial, scheduled for September 8th. Lieutenant, what, what is the significance of the Commission Trial? Well, first, on the onset, it's stating to organized crime that you are vulnerable. The top commanders of organized crime are vulnerable to prosecution. In the past, this has been very difficult for law enforcement to actually indict and convict a uh, top echelon organized crime figure. It was usually the soldier who was actually committing the criminal acts in the street or the people that uh, we targeted and that we uh, arrested and convicted. Uh, this commission trial and the top echelon organized crime figures being indicted and hopefully convicted is uh, proving that law enforcement can attack organized crime strategically by taking the top, middle, and lower echelon uh, personnel out. Has law enforcement ever been able to target an institution, a, a commission, a group, uh, an organization known as the Mafia, known as uh, the Commission? It's a recent innovation by law enforcement. Uh, the city police, New York City police, the federal government uh, have joined forces in attacking organized crime. And that's the only way you really can attack organized crime. You can't take it out piecemeal. You have to take it out all at once strategically. Like I mentioned before, top, middle, and lower level. And uh, target those people. And uh, this is the way you put an end to organized crime. How has the government made its case against the, the top bosses? Well, it's through uh, hard investigative uh, work by uh, in detectives and, uh, and agents, uh, through the use of uh, confidential informants, uh, through wiretaps, uh, through bugs. This is the way you attack organized crime. Has there been an increase in, in informants, the use of informants to penetrate organized crime? And what, what's the reason behind it? There, there appear to be many more informants now, or at least the police are using them more. Well, the introduction of narcotics uh, uh, by organized crime in this country uh, ha has been very significant. And, uh, and in this way, we have been able to uh, arrest and convict uh, narcotic peddlers who are uh, facing uh, a great deal of time in, in prison. And these are the people that we were able to uh, convince to uh, turn around and become confidential informants uh, for the government. How much is the... Uh is the mafia hurting through all these uh, all these trials, all these prosecutions? What's what's the status of the mob today? Well, publicity always hurts uh, organized crime. Uh, we have uh, witnessed that for the last 50 years. Uh, without the publicity, organized crime is a very uh, a subtle uh, type of an organization and a secret organization. What we fail to uh, forget is that organized crime is a secret organization. They don't print uh, their cards up and hand them out uh, like corporate uh, organizations. And the more secret they are, the more dangerous they are. And they try to keep that, uh, that statue. Could you just, Lieutenant, just repeat that? You said you're talking about the, the organized crime is a secret mm -hmm. organization, the phone yeah. ring. Organized crime is a secret organization. Uh, they are a criminal organization and they are secret. Uh, their strength lies through their mystique and through their secret ways of committing crimes. Uh, if they become too known, they are vulnerable. And through the efforts of law enforcement, they have become known over the last 20 years. And through the significant uh, investigative techniques by the New York City police and the federal agents, we have identified who these people are and we have attacked them strategically, and this is what's cultivating into these indictments that you recently have been hearing about. You've got many of the top bosses in jail or a series of indictments against people. Persico, Castellano is under a series, Salerno. Some of these older bosses have died. What, uh, what's taking their place? Who's taking their place? Is there a younger breed of, uh, of mafia leader? 
there is a younger breed of uh, organized crime leader. Uh, the old mustache peats are dying out, either through natural causes or through being executed. And uh, you have a younger breed, a younger Turk coming up into the uh, organized crime structure, uh, taking over. This will present a problem to organized crime, there's no doubt about it, because when the top leadership uh, do not have the uh, insulation and the respect that the old timers did, there will be uh, geographical disputes, there will be overlapping, and there will be uh, killings between organized crime personnel. Are you saying then that organized crime, not only in New York, but nationwide with other successful prosecutions, is really hurting, that it's in disarray? I mean. Is the war being won? Is, uh... Yeah, it's significantly. Uh, of course, there's been uh, uh, illegal activity been, take, uh, been in place for many, many years and it's very difficult to root out. Uh, is the money being sent out in the street? Is the VIG being picked up every week of the loan from the loan shock? Sure. Is the illegal gambling uh, going on to some degree? Absolutely. Uh, but, but the leadership in organized crime and the, the people that run it are now paying the price uh, for these illegal activities. Is the traditional organized crime, the mafia, being moved in on by other ethnic organized crime groups, especially in narcotics? Well, the, the five traditional organized crime families, the Bonanno, the Colombos, the Gambinos, the Genovese, and the Lucchese crime family, still control the organized criminal activity in the nation. However, there are other groups that have uh, made headways, especially in the narcotics field. But most of them are uh, entrepreneurs, individual entrepreneurs, who are not really reinvesting in this country. They are coming in, making a score, and then leaving back to where they came from. Where the traditional organized crime reinvests this money into so-called legitimate businesses. This finally, Lieutenant. Since Paul Castellano's death, what What's happened at the top of, of organized crime? Is there a vacuum? What does what, what is, what is his death signify? What's going on now? Well, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the killing of, a, of an organized crime figure is, is not a new happening. It's been happening for over 50 years. Uh, not at a, a rate that uh, we read it about it every day, but it has happened before. And it's a falling out among thieves. That's really what it is. It's a falling out among thieves, and these people are, uh, are concerned of who's getting the biggest uh, piece of the pie. Because organized crime is economics. It's all money. It's any way, shape, or form to make money. And uh, when a, uh, a significant group of that family is not getting their share, there will be a falling out. Do you think it was one, f one group working? Do you think it was a, a decision that was reached by other bosses, other families? You have to get uh, acquiesce from other top uh, organized crime figures to uh, take out a boss, to kill a boss. There's no doubt about it because otherwise you'd have a, uh, it'd be a foolhardy thing to do. It would be an open warfare. And uh, the time was uh, set for Paul Castellano to be killed uh, because of a, uh, a dispute within his family uh, which uh, impacted on the other families. And, uh, one thing these organized crime figures have to remember, that they are criminals, and they can't be both. They can't be the legitimate guy and the criminal. And uh, I think that was the fate of uh, Paul Castellano. Was that similar to the death of Carmen Galante? Was that the same kind of uh, execution? It was uh, in Galante's uh, uh, killing, it was out of greed. Uh, Galante was becoming the most uh, powerful organized crime figure at the disturbance of other uh, heads of organized crime because of his uh, influence with the uh, Sicilian Mafia and the importation of heroin into this country. Really finally, is the Gambino family still the most powerful in the, in the New York area and in the country, despite what's happened? The Castellano Gan gone, prosecutions? The Gambino crime family is the most powerful organized crime family in the United States. Anything more? Why? Can you tell me why? Uh, by sheer amount of numbers in that family. They have the largest uh, organized crime family with the most wealth uh, sp spread across the United States and also it reaches internationally. Is that still respected uh, despite uh, the two heavy indictments, the, the death of Castellano, uh, Gotti being in jail now? 
the family is still in place. It's an organi organized crime structure that's been in existence for, for 50 years. Uh, you know, the names of these families uh, have been uh, targeted by law enforcement. We traditionally call these families Gambino, Lucchese, Bonanno. However, there are always new heads of these families, but uh, for purpose of uh, identification, we named them uh, by the, uh, when we first established that they did have an organized crime family. Anything, anything else you want to say on, generally about organized crime? No, I, I believe that the, uh, the significant way that uh, the federal and New York City police and the district attorneys have uh, uh, combined their resources is really uh, the nemesis for organized crime. Thank you very much. Thank you. Andrew Maloney, new U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District. The judge has asked us not to comment on it at this time, so we're not going to be able to make any comments. Obviously, all counsel are asking for severances, and our feeling is we'd like to have those severances. Why do you want your client not separately? Client, Mr. Hoffman? That's uh, Jeffrey Hoffman, lawyer for Eugene Gotti. Who's Jeffrey Hoffman, lawyer for Eugene Gotti. You move for a change of venue. Why? Well, it's obvious that we are losing jurors as a result of the preeminent publicity that's occurred in this case. We'd like to go to an area where we can get a cross-section of fair and impartial jurors. Mr. Cutler disagreed with you in court. He said he wasn't asking for a change of venue. What's the difference between your client and Mr. Cutler's client? Mr. Cutler is representing his client in the fashion that he feels is proper and appropriate. I'm representing my client in the fashion that I feel is proper and appropriate. We would like to go someplace where we can have a fair cross-section of all jurors. Do you think all we're doing right now is living the American dream, which is getting a fair and impartial jury, hopefully. Do you think that your client and others here can get a fair trial? Uh, speak to me in about a week. Mr. Slotnick, what about the indictment, the charges that there is a Gambino crime family that was extortion for 18 years, loan sharking, gambling, murder, conspiracy? What is your comment on that? Those are all yeah, mere allegations. Yeah. The government must prove those cases beyond a reasonable doubt. It's their burden. It's their obligation. Uh, we'll await the evidence. At this point, all we are involved in is living the American dream, which is trying to pick a fair and impartial jury that even you would want to be judged by. It appears that we're having some difficulty in terms of getting a jury because they've been poisoned by the publicity. Our desire right now is to black out the media so that we can select 12 fair and impartial people. If we do that, we have no concern that the defendants will be acquitted. What does blacking out the media mean? It means that perhaps you ought to temper what you print and what you write and what you publish on television so that people will get the impression that these are mere allegations that have to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. My client is innocent as he sits there right now. I don't know whether I can feel the jury that would feel the same way. What are you suggesting in terms of the media? What are you suggesting in terms of the press? I suggest that the press control itself in terms of this case. It is not a romantic case. It is not a sexy case. It is a very serious case with very serious allegations in which several men have been accused of serious crimes to which we believe that they are innocent and we believe the government cannot prove their guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. If we had a fair and impartial jury, as you would want someone that you love to have, I'm sure they would be acquitted. Thank you very much. No. Cornelia. I gotta have lunch, fellas. Okay, just just a moment. Do you think you're, uh, you, I really don't want to. Is your client ready for trial? Now to get a fair trial here. I hope so. Can I get out? Yeah, I'll have to. No, I mean, you're talking to us about it. Just get a moment out. I think we have a problem. Speak to this man. Larry, let's follow. 
We have major problems with the publicity. I don't want to be a part of it. That's why I'm not uh, making any comments today. See that guy? Okay. You think you're going to have the same problems before? I think so. I'm afraid so, yes. What type of problem? People can't be fair when they're hit with all of this kind of publicity day in and day out. And it's unending, so that's the basic problem. What and it's a major the, problem. What about the entire uh, allegations of 18 years of racketeering, conspiracy, extortion, yeah. gambling? What's your comment about that and the government informants and lawyer terms? Well, the only comment is we're going to try the case. We're optimistic. How about the accusation of judge shopping that you had made? There's what no question saying? about that. How As you can that? see, what every ruling that, that comes down is a government ruling. It's a joke. But we're going to try the case anyway, so. What were you saying that uh, Ms. Jacqueline had been doing with these cases? It appears that she picked out the judge she wanted. And she got the ruling she wanted. What kind of trial? Perfect. Just walk them right out there. Shotgun on your left. Let's get this guy. 
Larry, can you get me up? You got me up. on them just as these kinds of people come out. Watch your bike. Hold on.